If you are a new AR-15 owner and you are confused, mildly confused, totally confused about which ammunition to shoot through your AR-15, this video is for you. Welcome to my channel, I'm Andy, and today we are gonna be shooting a video which is actually the second video in a three-part series discussing AR-15 rifle twists, ammunition selection with bullet weight, and how you stabilize those bullets depending on your AR-15's twist rate. So right now what we'll do is let's take a look at the boxes of ammunition. Let's actually take a look at the uh, bullets that I've pulled out of those boxes uh, with the casing and then we'll actually take a look at the um, actual bullets that I've pulled from the case so that we can see the differences. So let me change camera angles and we'll go from there. All right, now that I've got the camera angle changed, let's take a look at the boxes that we were looking at. And these would be boxes that you would uh, either look at online or go into your local store and see and wonder if you could shoot these through your rifle. So the first box is the Black Hills Ammunition 223 Remington and ammunition is sold by weight. So we determine the weight by grains. So this is 55 GR for grains. Full metal jacket is the type of ammunition that the bullet is. Next up we have the uh, Frontier Ammunition and as we can see it says 223 Remington. 68 grains so this bullet is heavier than the 55 grains that we looked at and it says BTHP which is boat tail hollow point which is a little bit different than the full metal jacket not much but a little bit on the end of the bullet next we've got an example of a um, Hornady uh, 223 Remington 75 grain boat tail hollow point and this would be another type of, you know, heavier bullet than we have seen. And lastly, we can look at the Black Hills 5.56 millimeter, 77 grain, 77 grain tipped match king bullet. A little bit different than the other bullets, but these would be your selections that you might see online or your local store. Again, these are all safe to shoot in rifles chambered for 5.56 millimeter or for 223 wild not safe for chambers of 223 remington all right let's next look at the um, cased bullets themselves and the um, pulled bullets they pulled from the case so the first cartridge we're going to look at is actually a 55 grain bullet and now this is not uh, the 55 grain bullet that I pulled from the case. I do not have the case from this. I buy this ammunition in bulk. This is actually Federal XM193, which is the closest you can get to the original Vietnam era uh, style bullet. And uh, you can see that um, it is a full metal jacket, meaning there is at the tip of the bullet uh, right here, there is no exposed lead core or any type of polymer tip uh, that would provide any type of uh, aerodynamic stability. It's just a completely full metal jacket. The next uh, bullet that we have is a 62 grain bullet. Again, I do not have the case for this, but this is the M855 round which is similar to our current military issue. It is a 62 grain bullet. And if you look at it, you can see that uh, the bullet is a little bit different shaped. It's more conical in nature, but it also remains basically the same overall length in the case itself. There's really not much of a difference. The next bullet I pulled is from the Frontier bullet, I actually pulled this from the case. I have the case for this one. This is the 68 grain bullet. Uh, and we'll take a look at this on the overall length. And again, as we can see, even a 68 grain bullet is basically the same length overall um, as the other two lighter bullets, the 55 
the 62, and now the 68. Then we have the 75 grain bullet from Hornaday that I pulled out of uh, uh, this case right here. And again, we can see it's relatively the same length, overall length, as the other bullets. The last bullet that I have uh, is the 77 grain tipped match king bullet from Black Hills, which is the 5.56 millimeter bullet, uh, which just means the 5.56, meaning that the chamber pressure is more with the 5.56 than the 223 Remington bullets. That's why you don't want to shoot your 5.56 uh, bullet in a 223 chamber because the pressure is too big. In a 223 wild chamber, you can safely shoot the uh, 5.56 bullet because it can handle uh, those types of pressures. So I have also pulled the bullets from each one of these cases, and there's where we start to see the difference. Although bullets are sold by weight, they are not sold by length. So the first bullet right here is actually this 55 grain bullet that I pulled from this uh, M193 uh, bullet casing. The second bullet is where we start to see some difference. The 62 grain bullet right here that I pulled from the M855 casing, you can see that there's starts to be a substantial difference in the length of the bullet. The next bullet that I have is the 68 grain bullet, which was pulled, if I can get it on there, good from this casing, and you can see there's really not much difference between the 68 grain bullet length and the 62 grain bullet length. Now there can be some different variations in material that are made, if it's lead or a steel core that can cause weight differences and the shape of the bullet itself. But these are pretty similar in uh, length, overall length that is. Next we have the 75 grain bullet that I pulled from the Hornady case. And as you can see here, this one gets a little bit longer than the 62 and the 68 grain bullet. And the last bullet that I pulled is the tipped match king bullet. You can see the green tip on the end. Um, this will be the longest bullet that we're gonna be able to fire um, in a magazine. You can see how long that bullet is. It's longer than the um, 75 grain bullet that it's next to and obviously substantially longer than the 55 grain bullet. This bullet has a tipped um, uh, end to it which is different than this uh, bullet right here, the M855, which is basically just a green paint on the end um, instead of a different uh, polymer tip. So if we stack this 55 grain up, we'll just put it around here and we can really see the difference between that 55 and that um, 77 grain bullet. Now this 55 grain bullet is going to be approximately three quarters of an inch where this uh, 77 grain bullet, we start to get uh, over an inch here. These two bullets are um, just a little over, I think, uh, uh, just under an inch, and this one is just about as well, just under an inch. So uh, that's the difference in the bullets. Now, with regard to the series that I'm putting together, uh, it's an important concept to understand that when you are trying to stabilize these bullets in your rifle, the overall length of the bullet matters, not the weight of the bullet. However, I will give a little spoiler alert um, that you can shoot any of these bullets in any twist rifle, uh, well, I'll, in any one in seven, one in eight, or one in nine twist rifle. You would not be able to shoot them in uh, an older Vietnam style rifle that would be a one in 12 twist. Um, the heavier bullets will not stabilize. You'll not be able to shoot them accurately. So a little spoiler alert for video number three. Um, if you uh, indicate that to somebody at the range or a place where you're buying um, your bullets and they ask you what twist rate you have, uh, you'll probably get into an argument there. So I encourage you to watch my third video in the series talking about stabilization so that you completely understand 
why you can shoot any of these bullets in any of those twist rate barrels uh, without any problem. Uh, you may not get the best accuracy, but um, or you might get the best accuracy depending on the bullet and how your rifle likes the bullet. I hope you found today's video helpful and I really encourage you to go back and watch my rifle twist video and then the bullet stability video. I believe that if you've watched all three of those videos it will save you lots of time and lots of money and it will also save you lots of headaches arguing at the range with people when they tell you you can't shoot that bullet in your rifle.